Hello, hello, welcome back. It's Ange again, and today I would like to share with you the Urban Crow Oracle by MJ Collinan. And what you are seeing here is on the left is the Urban Crow Oracle Mass Market Edition uh, published by Hay House. And on the right is the Urban Crow Oracle Indie version that I purchased off of MJ's website a while ago. And uh, the indie version is unfortunately out of print, but the good news is that the mass market is now available mass market through uh, Hay House or Amazon or wherever you buy your, your decks. Um, and the artwork is very, very similar. There are some slight differences and I will be happy to point that out, which is why I would like to do the side-by-side -side comparison because I do know that the indie one will show up in the buy-sell groups at some point or on eBay. So if uh, anyone is interested in in seeking out the indie version, they know what the differences are. Okay, now uh, they are both a 54 card Oracle deck. All right, and again, uh, this one is uh, Hay House. Hay House actually sent me this one for review purposes. I have had the indie version for quite some time and actually I use it quite regularly in my own readings and then readings for others. I feel this is a very well-rounded, uh, a well-versed deck in terms of offering both, I would say, like light and shadow aspects uh, that we can dive into. Uh, I also find, personally, uh, in terms of like journaling prompts I've used this deck for, so yeah, it's I feel that there's a lot of room for interpretation in terms of the cards, and of course MJ's artwork is just stunning. MJ uh, is also the author of the Four Hawks a Tarot. That is an indie uh, deck available on her um, her website, thecrowshoptarot.com. As always, I'll have you know all the links and, and whatnot below for you to check out if you're interested in that. But uh, she has many decks out, okay, not just these. So I uh, she's recently become published with Hay House with the Urban Crow Oracle and as well as the um, oh what is it called uh, the Guardian. Guardian? Guardian of the Night Tarot. Yeah, that's another one. I don't have that one, but it looks beautiful. I've seen many people share it here on YouTube. So if you want to check that one out, that one looks cool too. Uh, but yes, MJ does have other decks available on her website, the Forhoxa. She also has the uh, Grimalkin's Curious Cat Tarot I know available on her website, and I believe she's got one other oracle. I want to say it's called the Roar Oracle, maybe? Yeah, so if you check that out, but her other decks, like the Crow Tarot, and like I said, the Guardian of the Night, and now we have the Urban Crow, uh, as well as the Wise Dog Tarot, those are all available mass market now, right? So you can purchase those. I do know that she does offer like signed copies of the mass market, like on her website, so if that's something that interests you. And I do know she has a new deck coming out called Treasures from Above. I thought that was really, really interesting because it takes like these these tiny little uh, symbols, you know, on a card, and you look up the the meaning of the treasure, the little symbol on the card, it'll give you a yes or no answer. So you think of your question, you pull a card, whatever symbol catches your eye, you look up the answer in the book, and it'll give you yes or no. So that's kind of fun. So I'll be on the lookout for that. And one more thing I want to point out is there is a 20 card expansion pack available for the indie version on her website as well. And I say indie version because the backings of this are different from the mass market. So the expansion pack, although you could add it to here, it would have completely different backs. And so that really wouldn't make sense. Okay, so here is the mass market. It is in the typical uh, two-part Hay House box. Okay, there we go. And here is the back of it. And this is the indie version. You can see the difference in terms of the thickness. Okay, and the mass market says, like dark sentinels observing our world through intelligent black eyes, many see crows as foreboding omens, but crows bond, mourn, play, and even remember faces, offering gifts to the humans they like and dive bombing humans who have wronged them. This 54 card oracle deck and guidebook connects you to the mystical messages and intuitive insights of these clever and captivating birds from the sacred space of the nest to the gift of a shiny trinket. She uses the word trinket. Yay, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm such a dork. All right, moving on. This is the indie version, and it says, The Urban Crow Oracle deck brings you 
the wisdom and the quirkiness crows offer our world. Inspired by John Marsloff and Tony Angel's book, Gifts of the Crows, the cards in this oracle deck depict my favorite stories as well as some of my own interactions with the local neighborhood Corvids. And this one says copyright 2020, or this one just recently came out, 2022. All right, so let's take a look at the guidebook and the cards. Okay, the inside cover, by the way, looks like that for each of the decks. All right. And here is here are the guidebooks. Now, this one, I will say, uh, one of the major differences that I've noticed is that MJ does expand on the meanings of the cards in this booklet for the mass market, where this one here uh, for Indy doesn't go in as much detail, and it's like a little stapled pamphlet about 20... I would say about 23 pages, where this one here is like 50, I think 58, let me just check, 50, yeah, 58 pages. So, you know, it is uh, quite a bit more substantial in terms of size, and again, in with the information. And uh, at the end of the video, I will pull a card and read, and from each one, that way you can see like the differences of how that would be laid out. Other than that, the guidebook is identical, okay, in terms of, you know, um, the author's notes, you know, learning, getting to know your prose about the, like, all of that. It's all the same in both, okay? All right, and here we go. So you can see here the backs are different. Mass Market, Indie. And also you can see the thickness, okay, of the Mass Market is much thicker than the Indie. The indie version is more of the, um, I would say like that casino grade poker stock, you know, it's, and it's also got the glossy shine to it, where the Hay House is more cardboardy and it's matte. It's like that nice, I always call it the slippy matte feel, you know, you can hear it when you slip the, the cards through your hands there. Okay, so let's get to the actual cards themselves. And I will zoom us in so we can see detail because that's why I want to do the side by side so that you can really check out the, the detail of these cards. All right, let's do the zoom in thing here. Oops, just have to adjust my cards a little bit. Okay, there, perfect. Okay, so the one, uh, one of the most obvious things that you can see here is that the mass market includes numbers. So one through 54 where the indie does not. And as well, with the uh, mass market, I have found that they've like zoomed in a little bit more to the artwork where the indie version is like zoomed out. You can see the border, the bottom like little border is chunkier here where the indie is, you know, like not. And then you will notice the coloration is slightly different in each. As a matter of fact, the detailing of the crows specifically in the mass market, I feel are a little bit more detailed where in the indie it's a little bit darker so this is more like shadowy and this is they've like lightened up some certain areas i think in in the artwork other than that the artwork is pretty identical there is one card i will point out a difference that i did notice in in the deck okay so now we'll just flip through some of these cards so you can check it out and again you can see what I mean here right like how it's like uh, zoomed in where this is like out a little bit more you can see a little bit more of the flowers you can see the bird is appearing a little bit bigger because it's zoomed in the lighting is a little bit different right and these aren't um, complaints by any means this is just observation right uh, I'm, I'm really attached to this <laughs> version because I've had it and I've connected with it so deeply um, but I, I just, I really enjoy MJ's work. Her artwork does speak to me. And I feel, uh, you know, when I use these cards in readings, it really does add layers to the readings that I really do appreciate.
This is another example, right? You can see the roots of the tree and some detailing here, where here is cut off, you know, by that big border. I, you know, I would say though, that if I had a preference, I, I would not choose that big honking border at the very bottom. I, how this is more like transparent, I like that. You can actually see through, I don't know if you can catch that on the camera. You can actually like see through that, where this one is like this big bold border, right? So. I don't think it takes away from the message, you know, or the artwork, but uh, just again, an observation. And again, in the indie, you can see like, it's supposed to be depicting like the sound waves of his call, where here, they're there, right, but they're faint compared to this one. And just for a size comparison, if anybody is wondering, they are pretty much identical. Like when I line it up exact, it's just the tiniest little sliver of like the corner of the indie is showing. If you can even pick that up on the camera. So they're almost like identical size, right? And here's another thing too, I love this ghost card. See this tiny little feather down here? You don't really see that in this one, you know? Like it's actually being blocked by that border. Where right here you can see like the whole thing, right? So, and you can see here there's a different font that they've used as well for the keywords. This is one of my favorite cards for obvious reasons. There's trinkets involved. <laughs> the bird's picking out some shiny little objects to go and gift somebody. I think that's the coolest thing. I've never had a crow or a bird <laughs> gift me anything, but I think that is like on my bucket list. I would love to experience that. <laughs> I'd love to put that out there to the universe. Hmm. This is also another favorite of mine. It comes up in a lot of my readings, uh, personal readings. <laughs> and again, you can see here the lighting, right, is like, it, they've lightened it up here. As a matter of fact, you can see more of the rain depicted on the um, back of the these, or against the black of the bird, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then here it's a little bit darker. This is cool. When I first got this deck, I was kind of trying to figure it out before looking at the guidebook, and then I had to read. Basically, the crow is smart enough to take pebbles, like rocks, drop them in the water to make the water level rise, and therefore the shrimp will rise, and then they can eat the shrimp. So I thought that was really cool, like being, you know, insightful, being creative in how you get something done, how you accomplish something. Again, look at the detailing difference right how much darker it is here and then how they've added and like they've really lightened up some of the details in in the mass market version okay this is the one card i wanted to point out something do you see here for the mimicry it says come here scout where in the mass market, the, the words are not there. So, you know, mimicry, of course, uh, somebody trying to, to mimic you or mi mimic somebody. Uh, and here they've just, uh, they've left that out. So it's not a big deal, just a little detail, but thought I'd point that out.
You can really see the difference in coloration here, right? Between the the blacks. Oh, there's a glare from the light, but there, maybe you can see it there. I love this card as well. And there you have it, there's all 54 cards. Now, what I'll do is I'll take the mass market version, since this is the one that Hay House uh, sent me for review purposes, and I will give them a shuffle. It definitely is much thicker, right? Because when I, when I shuffle the indie, it's just so like flexible, like I said, like the poker style uh, card set. And it's much more like slippy. Slippy, is that a word? Um, <laughs> uh, slides across each other easier, right? Um, yeah. Where this one here, I mean, it, it's fine. It overhands just fine. Again, it's that nice matte uh, finish. And I just love that sound when it slides across each other there. So, all right. So let's go ahead and pick a card from the mask mass market version and let's take a look in the guidebook and see what it has for us so okay crow oracle what do we all need to know in here right now okay all right here it is play <laughs> awesome. Okay, so what I'll do is I will read you first from the mass market book, and then I'll read you from the the indie, and that way you can get an idea, right, of the difference. Okay. Come on. I know you're in here. There we go. All right, so in this situation, it is called Play, number 36, and it says, Crows are not always so serious. They enjoy the company of friends and spend time engaging in play. When this card appears, it is time to relax, exercise your creative mind, and maybe your body too, and play. When we give our brain something different to consider, something that brings us joy, they will reward us with being more productive when it comes time to go back to work. In a world where we are constantly consuming information, play asks that you disconnect and allow your brain to create some output. It is during play that our creativity expands. It is during states of play that our minds relax, and out of the blue, we discover the solutions to the problems that may have been eluding us. Okay, so there's that much write-up right there for play. And then, if we look into this indie version. Come on. 
There it is. You can see here this little snippet right here, right? Crows are not always so serious. They enjoy the company of friends and spend time engaging in play. When this card appears, it's time to relax, exercise your creative mind, and maybe your body too in play. When we give our brain something different to consider, something that brings us joy will reward us being more productive when it comes back, when it comes time to go back to work. Now that one is, I would say, pretty similar to the mass market one. So I will go ahead and see if I can find another one that's different. Let's see here. Like I said, it's just a little bit that she's added, right? Like protection. Let me see if I can find protection here and compare it. Let me see. Okay. Like for example, like protection in the mass market or uh, indie. Uh, this was the first card I created for this deck. Crows are fiercely protective of things they cherish. When I created this card, what I wanted to feel at that moment was protected. With everything going on in the world, knowing that there is something greater out there watching over us creates space for peace. It is when we feel at ease that we can create, that we can grow. Hold this card when you need to feel that one with your higher self and divine spirit is together they offer protection. And then, uh, crows are fiercely protective of things they cherish. When I created this card, I wanted to feel... Mm -hmm. Let me see. Hold this card... Use this card as a sign to move forward knowing that you are protected. Lean into its energy during times of stress or when you're feeling vulnerable. Doing so will allow you to shift your focus away from fear and restriction to feeling confident to take action. So that's what I mean. Like, it, essentially it's the same thing, but she has uh, added a little bit more at the, at the very bottom there. Okay, so that is um, the Urban Crow Oracle, both the mass market and the indie. And so... Do you have this deck? Are you interested in getting this deck? Uh, let me know down in the, the comments. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on another one. Bye for now.